Dancing Hosanna, dancing around the throne of glory. We shall sing Hosanna, hallelujah, we shall sing Hosanna, hallelujah, we shall sing Oh, dancing the throne of glory, we shall sing. Amen. All right. I don't think most of you know how to sing it. It's a Pentecost English song. So, amen. <laughs> it is a very English song. I love to sing it because I wanted to sing some cheese songs, but since you, since. You, Amen. Ana jokania ya de wo sheya kwantimu. Na ya fomu kwan bi na ya yeo. Adumusia o free soroto. Ma kwantufu no mo bi. Britain a kwantufu. Adumusia Oh, free Soroto Ma Went to full No more be Me say we ye ana Jokania Ye de wo she A kwentu imu Ma Ya fo mo kwain Bi na ya ye o Ye wure A A do monsi ya Oh, free, a sorrow top. Ah, when to fool. A barrow, ah, do monsia. No, free, a sorrow top. Ah, when to fool. Amen. Father, take control, speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want to share with you briefly, if I can, on what I've come walking in the fear of God. One thing that the church today uh, um, struggles with is the fear of God. It's becoming an essential commodity in the church is becoming something that is gradually losing its effect and impact on members of the church today, the fear of God. The fear of God is not necessarily being scared about God, even though God is so awesome that you need to be scared about him. But when we talk about the fear of God, it's not necessarily being scared. You are scared about God. But it simply talks about having a deep reverential respect for God. Very deep reverential respect for God. We are in days and times that people don't really have that deep reverential respect for God. From behind the pulpit to the last pew in the church is becoming an issue. That that kind of a deep reverential respect for God is not there. Another thing about the fear of God is a reverential submission to God. That you submit 100% to God, to his word, to his instruction, to the scriptures, to his ideology, to whatever is of God. You submit to it. You submit reverentially to God. That is what we call the fear of the Lord or the fear of God. Maybe I can add a third one. The fear of the Lord is also being afraid of God and especially of his judgment. 
There are people who don't, they are not afraid of God. <laughs> yeah. Being afraid of God that you, you fear. You are afraid of God and especially of his judgment. What is happening in our world today simply tells us that God with the strike of a finger like this can wipe all of us off. And nobody can bring him to any Supreme Court. You can't challenge him. You can't do anything. Do you understand? With just one strike of a finger like this, we will all be dead by tomorrow morning. We should be afraid of this God. We should be afraid of this God. Yes. We are not afraid of God. We are afraid of dying. We are afraid of virus. But we are not afraid of the God we will stand before. Who will judge us. We, we, we are not afraid. Yeah. Because we don't have the fear of God in us. We, we forget that dying is not the most important thing. But the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. And after that, you will face a God who will judge you. So the judgment of God, the anger of God, the wrath of God, we are not afraid. We are not. So today I want to walk you through uh, the book of Job, just the first chapter. Maybe I add a little bit of the second chapter, chapter one. We just, I just want to walk you through because in this book or in this chapter, God himself God himself says that the man Job feared him. Do you understand? God is saying Job feared him. So it is not a man who is saying it. It is God. Job was throwing me. So it is God himself who is telling the devil and for that matter telling all of us that Job feared him. It is not man. It is not like Job stood up and said, I fear God. God himself is attesting to the fact that Job feared him. And therefore, if we take Job as a case study, we can pick out a few things and it will help us. Is that not the case? Yes. So we will just look at a few essentials or essential characteristics of the fear of God in the life of Job. Because it's Job we are using. So we'll look at a few essential characteristics of the fear of God in the life of the man Job. So if the Abyssinian is ready, can you give us the book of Job chapter 1? Let's start to read. We will pick out a few essential characteristics. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. And one that feared God and eschewed evil. Hmm. Go, let's move. And there were, there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. Yep, keep keep rolling. His substance was seven thousand sheep. How many you have? <laughs> Three thousand camels, five hundred yoke of oxen, five hundred she asses, a very great household. So that the man was the greatest of all men in the east. Wow, what a powerful man! Huh? And his sons went and feast in their, in their houses, everyone on his day. And he sent and called, and they would send and call for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. Uh, and it was so, after their feasting, Job would send and then bring them and offer offerings. Go to the next verse. Let's just keep running through. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came. And God said, And the Lord said, Satan, whence comest thou? Then Satan answered uh, and said, 
from going to and fro in the air and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said, As I considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a perfect upright man, one that fears me, that feareth God and is still evil. So it is God himself who is saying, Job feared him. Job walked in the fear of the Lord. May you walk in the fear of the Lord. I know your arm and walk for me. I may you walk in the fear of the Lord all the days of your life. May you walk in the fear of the Lord. May the fear of the Lord be stamped in your eyes and in your spirit, in your soul. May you be may you be a woman that fear God. A man that fear God. A boy that fear God. May you be someone who has the fear of God in your DNA. Very important. The fear of God. The fear of God. The fear of God. Somebody who is afraid of God. Because you know God can kill you now. And when he kill, nobody can question him. God, if God decides to kill you now, it's not a murder case. It's not an issue. Nobody can take him to any court. Do you understand? God can. That, that's why the, 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 I think it was Samuel. He said, thou kill it and make it alive. And kill and make alive. He is so powerful that we should be afraid of this God. We should fear him reverentially in all our deeds. We should have the fear of God in our spirit. We should not just come to church and go and come and go and come. We should not just stand here and pretend to preach and preach and preach. The fear of God, the fear of God. He said here, the end of the matter is to fear God. The end of the matter, assembling in every year, and he said, the end of the matter, the conclusion thereof is to fear God, not sport, fear God, not, not, not makarati, makarati, something, something that you put, fear God, fear God, fear God, fear God is the end of the matter. The most important thing is fear God, not, not designer, we are fear God, fear God, fear God. God, not Peruvian hair and Brazilian hair. They are useless. Fear God is the end of the matter. The most important thing as a Christian is to fear God. Fear God. Fear God. No breakthrough. Oh, when will my breakthrough come? Breakthrough, we thank God. But the end of the matter is not breakthrough. It is fear God. Fear God. All the days of your life. Fear God. It's as simple as that. That's all. All our argument is that, that that's on the mo- end of the matter. The end of the matter is to fear God. Amen. And one day when you stand before him, may he be able to say, you feared me. Amen. You live all your life with the fear of the Lord in your heart. So Job, God is saying, Job feared me. And then, because you are using Job as a parameter, Maybe if we are using Isaiah or we are using somebody else, maybe we will pick out some lessons. But because we are using Job, and God said Job feared him. That God did not say much what Job did. But at least the first chapter gives us a few tidbits that we can draw from and see how Job feared the Lord. Even though God did not tell us exactly that this was what he did, but we can pick out some things. Abi, are you okay? Is everybody okay? All right. So, verse 1. Give me verse 1. The, the Bible said there was a man in the land of Uz who, 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 whose name was Job. That man was perfect. So, the first essential characteristics in the life of Job that showed that Job feared God was that he was perfect. He was perfect. So, in your own life, you also check Am I perfect? Perfect in this sense, that don't mean that 
he is right, 100% right. No, no, no. It means simply that he tried to do the best that he could do. In fact, I wrote it somewhere. He tried to live as good as he could. As good as he could. So he tried to, to live as good as you can. As good as you can. As good as you can. Not before men, but before God. As good as you can. As good as you can. If you're a pastor, be as good as you can before God. Let God not have fault and issues with you. As good as you can. You can. As good as you can. That's why Apostle Paul said, I serve the Lord with a clean and a good conscience. As far as my conscience is concerned, I did my best. That is what it means. So if somebody fears God, he tries to be as good as he or she can in every area before God. In every area before God. He tries to be as good as, not shabby, not anyhow, no, as good as he can. That's why the Bible says, as far as it is within your means, live at peace with all men. He tries to live at peace because as far as God is watching he's doing his best he's doing, he's trying he's trying his best he tries to reconcile he tries to live right he tries to avoid sin he tries to run away from the devil he tries his best he tries check your life are you like Job are you living as a perfect person and that aspect, I'm telling you, it can go down, trickle down, uh, even to the way we, we appear before God. Yes. I mean, that if you are even to appear before God, you try to appear as good as possible as you can. Yes. That's why you cannot just wear a bathroom chalotte and just wear anything with big t shirt and you have written in front, relax. Sorry. Will you take that same thing and go to, to parliament? Will you appear in an interview that same way? So sometimes eh, we don't fear God, or even in our appearance. Like you can dress somewhere where you treat your heart, or not for a pump here, you go pumping. No, no, I must say, me the ball life, and I saw the old cock, no, 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 Look at the way our ladies dress for wedding. And look at the queen. Look at the way they will give instructions. Say, where they were all back. Now you are where more. You are back. And here we are. We say we fear God. You will see the bride. The, the bride, she is coming. Oh, yeah, here he show you. What did you say? What did you say? What did you say? What Stretch marks in your hour. What did you say? What did you say? Do you, do you fear God? If you fear God, you will know that you are coming to a holy house. Because you can never appear like that before Asantehene. How can you appear before Heavenly Father God? As good as you can, you would dress to cover yourself to be different, to look, to look like you are appearing before a great personality. As good as you can. Do you understand? As good as you can. And it includes when you want to dress this as a car bell. Because if you are to appear before when you zoom zoom zoom, as why she cocoa bottle, zoom 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 zoom. Life will be in Life will be in him. Life will be in him. Oh. <laughs> so a perfect man. He was a perfect person. He tried everything to be as good as possible. In the sight of the Lord. Number two, we are told that he was an upright man. We are looking at essential characteristics of somebody who fears God. Number one, perfection. Number two, uprightness. The Bible says he was an upright man. Upright simply means that he was straight. He was a straight person. There are many people who claim to be Christians, including pastors, who are twisted, crooked. They are crooked. You understand? Uh-huh. When you come down, down, down to our 
Local palace, their real name is Daraga. Daraga. They are Daraga. Daragasa. And yet they claim to be to, to be worshiping God. They come to church, they dance around. Meanwhile, they are twisted. Their minds are twisted. They, they are crooked. We have Azam people in the church. We have Azam people even wearing cassock. And putting on Pastor Jesse with that thing here. Yes. Meanwhile, they are Azam crooked for one night. They will chinchim your hand. They will chinchim your hand. They will use psychology. They will use everything to outwit you. And they say they fear God. May you not be a crooked, a twisted. Your mind is twisted. Your, your, your psychology, your philosophy, everything about you. You are a twisted, crooked person and you are in church. Brother, wake up. You don't fear God. That you are a twisted person. You are in church. Praising the Lord. When you are twisted, crooked, crooked, and I'm on you, sister, you are twisted. Can you, a sister, you are dating three men at the same time? One is a Konyaku, one is in Tema, and one is in London. Osi wuni mnyani, wuni wuni mnyani ane diya ba ya yenti, wuki poa mnyani na. And you are keeping up, and you are you, you, you are not straight. You are lying to this and lying to that and lying to that. You are not straight. May you be an upright person. May your year be year and your nay be nay. The Bible said, let your answer be simply yes. Anything beyond this is evil. Anything beyond is evil. So you are upright. I say you are upright. You are not a zan. No, you are upright. You don't use the Holy Spirit to azan people. There are people using the Holy Spirit to azan people. People run home. You are saying, oh, what do you want to do? Please. <laughs> Please be careful. Don't use spiritual manipulations. I see something, I saw something, I enter into your family. Ooh, the spirit of God is carrying me, and sometimes nothing is carrying you. It is pepper and kenke you eat in the morning. You are you are not upright, you are twisted. May you not be a twisted person. Young girl, your parents know you are upright, you are correct. Meanwhile, you are twisted. You are twisted. Your minds are twisted. You are polluted. Only you knows what you have been watching at night before you sleep. It's bad. It means you don't fear God. You don't fear God. When you fear God, you will walk in uprightness. Number three, the Bible said he eschewed evil. These are characteristics in the life of Job that show that he feared God. He eschewed evil. To eschew evil simply means that to run away from any evil. To run away. Anything that smells like sin. When Job, when Job gets closer and he feels that the thing smells like sin, he just ran away. He doesn't say, let me knee. No. Once it smells like sin, he won't be there. Anything that looks like sin, Job will be, you'll be far away from it. You, you are dabbling with sin. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are trying to even blend sin and drink. Job will run away. The Bible says, flee all appearance of evil. Not the evil itself. When the thing appears like evil, run away from it. And you are making argument. When something looks like sin, evil, Job will not be there. The Bible says he eschewed evil. He runs away from evil. He will not be closer to anything that looks like evil. 
not alone to argue and say, give me quotation. No, the ones the thing looks like evil, sounds like evil, smell like evil, have a resemblance of sin. You won't see Job there. You won't see Job there. Once the music, even the dancing has some resemblance of sin, he doesn't want to go there. Once the party, that party they are going, it has some resemblance of sin and some music, and some people are twisting their waist like a lizard going for a funeral, and some are holding breasts. Job will just run away from that party. He will say, I pay, but I won't, I won't attend. But you, you are making argument. You are making argument. Huh? Eh? It's just a party, ordinary party. And so if you are saying this, how can we win them? Who did you win there? Who did you win there? Everything that looks like evil. If you fear God, you will not go near it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? If you fear God, you will not go near anything that looks like evil, presents itself like evil, appears like evil. Not that you jump into it and be defending yourself. Number four, Job believed in prayers. You see, one of the signs that you fear God is your belief in prayers. <laughs> yes. If I can see how much you believe in prayers, I will know you fear God. Because when you kneel to pray, raise your hands to pray, fall before the Lord to pray, you are telling the Lord that my whole life depends on you. I can do nothing without you. My connection cannot save me. I'm not a superman. I cannot do anything. Lord, I don't even know what is ahead of me between this place and the main road. Except you go with me, I cannot go. Oh God, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So when you kneel down to pray, you are saying, Lord, you have granted me a new day. You have ushered me into a new morning. But I don't know what is ahead. Direct my path. Lead me. Hold my hands. Take hold of my family. Lord, we depend on you. But the moment you get up, no prayer. Your personal life, no prayer. Friday prayer meeting, you will show up. Anything prayer, you are not involved. The only prayer you have prayed, uh, blessed, bless Lord Jesus, and then you are going. And then you think you fear God. You don't fear God. If you fear God, you will be afraid to live your life prayerlessly. I'm telling you, if you fear God, eh, you'll be afraid. you say, if I don't pray, I don't know what will happen to me. If I don't pray, I don't know what is at stake. If I don't pray and God withdraws himself. But those who don't pray and they are comfortable, it means that they themselves, they are almighty. They are Alpha and Omega. They know their way out. Omnim Krum. So we rely on him, we call on him. The moment you decide that you won't pray, you shall play, you shall not pray, you will not pray. You, you, you will, prayer is not so crucial to you. And sometimes you even argue, I'm sorry, Ben, what kind of church is this? Every day, prayer, 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 what is it? When people are working hard, hey! You can work all your hard work. One wind like this from the east will blow everything off. Except the Lord watches over. The watchman, they watch in vain. In Usani Drisu, Omunina, they will watch in vain. Except the Lord, except, except the Lord, except the Lord, except the Lord, except the Lord builds the house. The builders, they build in vain. So if you fear God, eh, you will be afraid even to step out of your yard without a word of prayer. I'm telling you. That's a sign that you fear, you fear God. That's why Job, according to the verse 5, Job chapter 1, the Bible says his sons, seven sons and daughters, they will, do a, they will do something and Job will call them early in the morning for prayers. And in the prayers, he will sanctify them and offer big offerings to God. Hey, the man, he was very, far richer than you. You are not talking about his riches now. Far richer than you, but he believed in prayers. 
He will wake up to pray. You see, if you fail to pray, you have become like the people in Job 21.15. Job 21.15, who said that? Who said that? Who is the almighty that we should serve him? And what will we gain if we pray? That's exactly what you have said. Even though you didn't open your mouth to say something. That's exactly what you have said. Yeah, sometimes action speaks louder than words. Oh man, Kasa, Sahad Waka. Was in Yamin Son and Waya, Minsum, no, no, and by Bonsum Passua, bang, and a washua, as I saw on the Pama Soria, make a business for baby, Makojaki Kikim. Yes, sir, you disregard praying to God. He said, What is the Almighty that we should serve Him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto Him? Yes. You may say you never said that, but that is what you mean by not praying. You are saying, so Job, because he feared God every now and then, he will pray. Daniel feared God. He will pray three times in a day. He will never do anything without calling on, on the name of the Lord. Because he feared he might make a mistake. He might sway off. He might do something that is not in the, in the counsel of God. He may go off here. So he will call on God. One sign that you fear God is not that you are just shivering, shivering. No, one sign that you will fear God is how much you involve God in prayer. You invite God. You kneel before God. You depend on God. You are always praying to the Lord. If you're a pastor, you are not always praying to the Lord. You are telling God that you have gone to Methodist. You have all the lessons about church growth and how to handle a church. The 15 keys to do this. 77 keys to do this. 19 keys to turn the church around. 18 keys to multiply resources in the church. 15 keys to raise leaders. So you are doing it by yourself. And God is sitting there and watching you. It's a sign you don't fear him. I'm telling you. It's a sign you don't fear him. And anybody who pray more. Ah, ah, ah. It's a sign you fear God. Because one of the things that will happen is that in your prayers, God will be telling you, Kokacha Kwa, you say, sorry. Adiwe Akachiru Kunwan Kaniye. Yes. In your prayers. If you are not praying, your life, there will be no corrections. Yeah. You will be yourself. Ajia Magajia. You will be yourself. <laughs> Number five, sign that Job feared God was that he believed in sanctification. Uh, I can tell, or you can tell, I don't even say I, you can tell by yourself whether you fear God by your belief in sanctification. Do you believe in sanctification? Do you believe in living a sanctified life? Do you believe in not touching things God says you should not touch? Do you believe in living a clean and a holy life? Do you believe in it? Do you believe that when two Christians say they are caught in, they don't sleep together? They don't go and hide behind some wall and then holding bottles? They don't do that. Do you believe that they don't pet, they don't kiss, kiss, they don't do things and, and do abortion and then come to church with long veil from here to the Trata Junction. You believe in sanctification? Do you believe that as a child of God you don't mingle with the ungodly? Do you believe in it? Do you believe in it? Do we believe in sanctification? That certain things we do defile us. And that you don't want your body to be defiled. You don't want your Christian life to be defiled. You don't want your life to be defiled. You don't want anything unholy, ungodly to be part of you. You want to live a sanctified life. The Bible said Job will call his sons in the verse 5. And then he will pray that God, if they have sinned, sanctify them. Because he believes so much in sanctification. It is not today, Christian, who don't believe in sanctification. And sometimes, some are even holding microphone preaching. They don't believe.
believe in sanctification. We do anything, anyhow, and we, we just feel it is okay. It is not all. When you fear God, you will know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that one day God will judge you. And that you, you have to be careful. There are things everybody will do and go scot-free. You cannot do. There are things you cannot do because you believe in sanctification. There are places you cannot go. There are friends you cannot keep. We used to sing, the things I used to do, I do them no more. Places I used to go, I go there no more. Friends I used to keep, I keep them no more. There is a great change since I met. Today there is no change. We are the same. We are with them. We are mixing things with them. What do you wish when you watch a bit as I show on passing? Nothing has changed about you. What say I don't have to be did ye? Oh, person, I can show you how you can eat well, well, well. Just go on a three day fasting. After that, your appetite level will be so high. In Chimwe, Agrika, Kro, Kube, be beyond all home. Thing. You would like to eat everything. You, 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 yeah, I tried. You don't need big test. Adam Kobe test. And I begin to say, Adam Kuan. Ah, praise the Lord. You don't need all those things. You live a sanctified life. Not everything enters your body. Not everything touches you. Not every, your hand does not touch everything. The Bible said, let holy men lift up holy hands. So that when you lift your hands, they are soiled. You are careful what your hand touches. You are careful what your eye watches. You want to live a sanctified life. You don't want your life to be polluted. That is a sign that you fear God. Number two. Which, which number? Number six. You fear offending God. Job was afraid afraid of offending God. That's a sign that you fear God. When a man fears, he's afraid of offending God. He's afraid. So he will call his children and say, peradventure, when they were doing the party and they were eating, maybe one of them says something that offended God. So God, then he will kneel down and he will give offering and he will say, God, I beg you, on behalf of my children, not you, on behalf of his children, he will beg God that in case any one of his sons or the three daughters, any one of them had offended God in the wake of the party. And here we are, we are not afraid of offending God. We can offend God every moment. And we have our favorite scripture. If a, if a man says he has no sin, he's a liar. If he confess our sins, he's just a, and then we quote it and we are excited. You continue like that. One day, you will be offending him like that and the trumpet will sound. And you will be left behind. The day you wake up and you hear that breaking news. So many people have disappeared. When we were entering 2020, did you know this thing will happen? One day we'll wake up and they'll say, breaking news. Several people have disappeared. The day you hear that news, it means you didn't go. May you never hear that news. If there is any news in this world, you should not hear. It is that news that several people have disappeared. The day you hear that news, hey, it will be terrible. If you're a pastor, and continue to they will come to you. They say, Pastor, why did you go? So you deceived us. You will refund all their tithes and offering. You will be out shop. <laughs> Many Christians today, we are not afraid of offending God. We are not. We can offend God and we are okay. Hey, dangerous. We are not afraid. We are not like Joseph. The woman said, there is nobody in the house. Potiphar's wife. Nobody in the house. He said, look to the left. Job, he looked. Look to the right. Look. Look to the back. Look. Look here. Look. Then he said, there's nobody around. Let's do it. Let's do it. Nobody will see it. It's just between the two of us. Nobody will see it. You won't report. I won't report. Nobody will see it. Then, then, then Joseph did this. Then the lady said, what, what are you doing? He said, did we look here? 
You do it again. He said, how can I do this grievous sin and offend my God? He was not thinking about the pleasure he would get. The woman said, I will even promote you. I will let them employ you in the national security. They, they gave offers. 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 And they said, even if you want scholarship for, for, for University of Faro Education, it's fine. I will come give you. I'm the man. I'm the woman. I give you. But the man said, I don't want to offend God. If there is anybody in this life I don't want to offend, it's God. I can even offend you. I can offend you. You are the big man's wife. I can offend you. I won't be afraid. But to offend this God who has given me life, who can just do the and then I will expire. I don't want to offend him. Many people offend God, do things against God, and it is normal. It is normal. They are in church. Dancing. Oh. Dancing. Some will go and sleep with their boyfriends. And their boyfriend will even come and drop them for church service. And then, then, then because they, they went slept with the boyfriend, the boyfriend took the person to shop and bought new dress and shoes as a fornication compensation. <laughs> or payment for the fornication. They bought it for the girl. And then the boyfriend would drive the girl to church. And the girl will wear, you know wear, wear those dress and come to church. And if you are dancing, brass smart, he, she will stand there. She will come forward and also be dancing. Oh God, you can't kill me. You can't do me anything. You, can't. you are not afraid of this God. That of all dresses, you didn't wear anything. You wore the one that is fornication compensation. And you have brought it to this almighty God to dance. When people are dancing, you are dancing. Hey. You, do, you are not afraid of offending this God. This God who can take your name out of the book of life. And this God, he said, Jesus said, I will show you who to fear. Don't fear man who can kill you but cannot touch your soul. But fear this God who can kill both the body, the soul and put your spirit in hell fire. You are not afraid of him. You are offending him. You are not afraid. Number two. When the seventh thing that showed that Job feared God was the offerings he offered to God. You see, one thing that can tell whether a man fears God or not is in offerings. Check through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Anybody who truly feared God, you will see it in their offerings. You will see it. This your abrochere that you have never given beyond five pounds is telling a story about you. Yeah. I told you on Friday, you can take 100 pounds, 200 pounds to the market and you say, but giving it to God, it becomes too big. When it is God, you even come with 10 pounds, Moses and Mami. Moses and pen. Because my friend, exchange rate in our Ghana, we say we are super, and we are in our Ghana. So you are always like that. You see, offering, the Bible said in the verse 5 that because Job feared God, every time his children would do an, uh, a party, he would call them offer offerings to the Lord. Kneel down and pray. No small offering. Job will offer offerings on him, his own behalf. Offer offerings for his wife. Offer offerings for seven sons. And offer offerings for three daughters. In all 12, and I'm sure housemates and house girls and boys are also included. This, how big you will offer the offerings? We, what is the biggest offering ever you have ever given to God? Ask yourself, ask yourself. You have never given God that much. And those of you wearing and some amphony. Sometimes the wig, the wig, the thing you are wearing. 
you have never given that amount of money for wearing a week, even for God before, all your life. And I'm not I'm not attacking you, please. I'm showing you what God said about Job. And at least basic things we can record about Job. That can be an indica- that can be indicators. You understand? The man was heavy. That's why Abel's offering, eh? God, the Bible said God had respect unto it. Because Abel respected God reverentially. He, he feared God. When you read Genesis chapter 4, can, probably you can read it. Most, most times when you see Bible stories, you will see Abel going to offer offering, like my book of Bible story, with one sheep. You know so? And then they put it on the fire. It's not true. The Bible didn't say so. Let's read what the Bible said. The Bible said he gave the first links, the firstborn of all his animals. So there were plenty. Oh, Genesis chapter 4, please. Yeah, and Abel, he also brought of the first links of his flock. So if he had 1,000 goats, first links, that, 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 maybe if I explain it better, you understand. Maybe first, he had two. And the two gave birth. Into the two that gave birth, the firstborns that were given, set aside. Then those firstborns also gave birth. They also their firstborns set aside. So if it was like five years period, he brought the offering. He had taken all firstborns aside. Ah, then he gathered all of them and came and offered to God. God sat in heaven and said, no, this man fears me. This man has respected me enough. And therefore God had respect unto his offering and unto Abel. Look at your life. We, we are not committed to any great offering, especially our kind of church. We are always complaining who is eating the money, who is eating the money, who is eating. We can't show the other part for the We did DHA. We did DHA. We did too many now. We say, hey, now can see people more. Now can see people. What mindset is this? What mindset is this? And if you don't give, let's do this. Is your property. How can you manage it? Let us give reverentially. You see, we pastors to have helped you to do that. Because we have not taught you the sacredness in giving to God. Sometimes we, we seem as if we are begging you. Sometimes we seem as if we are doing some rough. Until we don't see it as sacred. Abraham and Co, when they were giving offerings to God, it was a covenant. It was something sacred. It was not something they just did anyhow. It was their worship. It was something they would bring to God. Because they feared God and they will bring the best of their substance in honor of God to worship God. Listen, look at all these virus that are happening. With all your millions, if one hit you, God forbid, if something should hit you now, all your millions will be useless. It is God who saves us. So the fear of God will make you give your best and give without without and you know, 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 inside. You will give without any you know. Not complaining, not asking things. You just give to God. And if you drop it before the altar of the Lord, those who manage it, they also have their own headache. If they mess up with it, they have got to, to, compl- to, to face. Do you understand? If you go and count church money, where you back and then you put one in, in your piano. Church money, you have taken 50 pounds. You have put in your drawers. What do you want to happen to you? You want to kill or you want to die? <laughs> uh, you see, it's not every money we drop. Have you ever seen somebody go to a shrine and there is money the person pick? Whether the fetish priest is there or not. No worry. I said, no worry. We'll pick it. It's something sacred. And therefore, pastors who collect offerings, 
must be warned. Church leaders who collect offerings, you cannot collect something sacred because the moment the money comes and we put it here, then we will rise up and pray. The moment a prayer is said, that money becomes God's money. It's not government money. It's not your money. It's not pastor's money. It is God's money. You misappropriate it. You have God to face. If you fear God, you will be careful that before you tell people that we are raising funds to buy a chair, you already know where to get the chair. Because if you raise the money and you don't bring the chair, you have God to face. People just do things anyhow. Boy, you see the movie. And the envelope, not the first one in the fifth grade. Say envelope, we are the Fabia, we are the fifth grade. We are the fifth We are the fifth grade. Let's make the offering something sacred. Let's give with all our heart. And those who handle the offering, let us let people post confidence in the offering, in giving to God. Because when we do things anyhow, we are depriving them of giving out their best unto the Lord. And their life is affected. And your life is affected. But when we give fully, when we also administer well with the resources of God, then the people are confident and they can give more to God. And God will honor us and God will bless us. Am I preaching a good message the way you are looking at me? That's how I preach. Very, very important. May we not, may we not play with God's offering. When we touch it anyhow, we have got to do. Look in the Old Testament. Anybody would touch the offerings, the sacrificial offerings anyhow. Fire came from heaven to deal with them. We, when you fear God, you are afraid. I cannot be going and you give me money. This money is for the church. Once you didn't say it's for me, I cannot even take one cent out of it. Because <laughs> financial loss to the kingdom. You will face God. If you fear God, you'll be careful. I'm telling you, you will be careful with God's money. Number two, praise the Lord. <laughs> Number eight, practicing your beliefs in God for a lifetime is a sign that you fear God. You practice your belief in God for a lifetime. You practice your belief. When I see you, that you go to church, you read your Bible, you pray, you are always going, you are always a Christian. You were a Christian in 1998 uh, when I saw you. And today you are still a Christian. Not that you were a Christian in 1973. And then you got to come, uh, uh, where, where? UK. And then something happened. And I saw no, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a when you do that, it doesn't show you fear God. When you fear God, you practice your Christianity for a lifetime. You don't get to a point and stop and join the world and then first nanka be a Christian is see I mean Christian. No, your Christianity is for a lifetime till you die. Nothing can separate you the you and, and the love of God. Nothing, nothing, persecution. He said, nothing. What can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. You practice your Christianity, your beliefs for a lifetime. If you believe in giving, you give till you die. If you believe in giving your time, you give till you die. If you believe in, in going to church, you do it till you die. If you believe in worshiping God, you worship God till you die. If you believe in offering your services to God, you will do it till you are 89 and you are still behind this thing. Do it quick, 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 quick. And then your hand is shaking and you are still doing it. Yes, because you are practicing it until he calls you home. You never stop. You don't get to a point and say, I won't do it again. No. You don't get to a point. Like a small boy who we were doing wedding and he was to be the page boy or something. The boy was tired. Almost put to know our He was standing there, then um, me and the mother and a few people were sitting there. Then the boy, the boy just came to us. We said, Go. Cool. He said, No, I won't do it again. Yeah, I'm tired. Then he started removing the coat. He said, I won't do it again. We beg him, uh, he said, He won't do it again. He should go and even stand in the pictures. He said, No, he won't do it again. I'm tired. You don't get to that point as a Christian. According to the verse 5, let's read the verse 5. Let's read the verse 5. The Bible said, and this he did continually. 
Job 1.5. He, he never stopped. Ah, I've taken too much time. I need to close. Meanwhile, I have plenty of points. And it was so, the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent, sanctified them. And this he did, uh-huh, and sanctified them, and rose up early morning and offered burnt offerings according to their number. Go to the next verse. I think, uh, now the, no, 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 no. There's, some, there's a verse that said he did this continually. He did this all the time. I think it's a verse 5. Yeah. He did this all the time. And it was so when the days of their feasting was gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number. There is where? Five. Yes. Maybe you give it to us in another version. Yeah, this is not all. You have left some of the ve- some. The number he did this all. Aha! Uh-huh. This did Job continually. That's a sign that you, you fear God. That you are reading your Bible continually. You believe in the things of God continually. You listen to God continually. You pray continually. And it's a lifetime thing. You are condemned to it. You never stop it. That is a sign that this person fear the Lord. Number nine sign that you fear God is worship. Offering your worship to God. Job offered God, uh, worship God even in the midst of pain. Even in the midst of pain, according to the verse 20. The Bible said when he was told that disaster had happened in his house, the Bible said he got up, fell on his face and worshiped the Lord. And worshiped the Lord. And he said the Lord give it, the Lord take it. He worshiped the Lord in the midst of pain. How, how well you are worshipping God is a sign that you fear God. If I could come and see you fall on your face, even though you have nothing to eat and you still worship God, you say, shoe or no shoe, I will serve him. Though he slays me, I have no other God to run to. I will continue to worship him. I continue to lift my hands. I continue to dance. I continue to praise him. No matter what happens, I will never stop worshiping God. Whether my prayer is answered or not, whether my expectations are met or not, whether my breakthroughs have happened or not, God is still God. Worship him any time. Worship him any day. Worship him at all times. If I can see you worshiping God like that, then I will know you fear God. Those who fear the Lord will worship him. It's as if their life is hooked to worship. You can never stop worshiping. And the the tenth, the tenth sign is that Job never accused God falsely. According to verse 22. You see, when you accuse God falsely, it's a sign you don't fear God. Yeah. One sign. Check your life. And Pastor Amir, I've never seen accused God falsely. It's not true. If you accuse God falsely, it's a sign. The Bible said, nevertheless, in all these things, Job did not accuse God foolishly. Job did not accuse God foolishly. Sometimes you see a sister say, and you will be a secret, and can you hear me? I'm so many, 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 I'm that serving God has rather brought untold hardship on you. You are accusing God foolishly. You understand? You are accusing God foolishly. And you are so see that sir, sir, I say, you are accusing the scriptures foolishly that God is not true, that everything God has said in the Bible is a lie. You, you are accusing God. And all these pastors, they will say, stop fornication, stop this, stop this. So how can we marry? How can we marry? If, if, if somebody wants me, I'll give it to her. Uh, you, you, you're a fool. A fool in capital letters. We use paintbrush to write your own. To accuse God for your predicament. No matter what happens in your life, remember of the billions of people on this earth, you are insignificant. 
for God to even pay attention to you and answer your prayer, you should fall on your face and say, God, I thank you. Remember our planet in the, in the face of the universe, our planet Earth is insignificant. This planet called Earth, we need about 12 or 13 of it to fit into Jupiter. And God is the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything in it. Who are you? Who are you? What is your name? Who are you, Kwejeje? Who are you? I feel like beating you. Who are you to question God? Who are you to ask God foolish questions? Who is that person that has been asking God foolish questions? Is that person here? Where is that person? You say foolish questions. You, you ask God. You accuse God. You say it's because you came to church. That is why things are not going well. You say things like that. You say it's because you give your offering. You are accusing God foolishly. No matter what happens to you, to him be praised. We are unworthy servants. Do you understand what I'm talking about? No matter what happens, I tell you, refrain from accusing God foolishly. Don't make utterances that will insinuate that you are offended in God. You are offended in the church. You are offended in an institution like the church that God has established. Don't utter, don't say things. Don't, hey, whatever. And there are people who are in church, they are angry with God. They are angry with God because they were looking for a breakthrough in 2019. It did not happen. Maybe God saved your life. Maybe if it had happened, you would have been in a mortuary by now. In everything, just thank him. To accuse God foolishly. That because you prayed, don't say things like that. Don't say things like that. Whatever happens in life. You see, the Muslims are better than better off than Christians. No matter what happens to them, they say it's Allah. They will still stand and say, Allah Wakubar. But unless something small happens to a Christian, they will abuse God, abuse the pastor, eh, pastor and empire and can. They will abuse the pastor, abuse the church, abuse everybody, and say things they are not supposed to say. If you fear God, you will not say anything like that. You be careful of your utterances. May we get to that level like Job. I wanted to share with you 10 limitless breakthroughs that happens when you fear God. But it seems your time is up. So maybe I will run through it like a commentary. 10 limitless breakthroughs. That, that is basically where I wanted to even dwell. But I've spoken too much on this. 10 limitless breakthroughs. Number one. When you fear God, God personally builds a hedge of fire, a hedge around you. Read the book. The Bible said, God, Job chapter 1 verse 10, God built a hedge around Job. May God build a hedge around you. That's Job 10. Elim, Elim. May God build a hedge around you. You see, when you fear God, eh, God, he will personally build a hedge around you. You will be untouchable, unkillable, undiable, unvirusable. God will build a hedge around you. Number two, let's, let's give me the quotation. Give me the quotation. Verse 10. The Bible said, the, it's Satan who told God. He said, has thou not built a hedge around him? Yeah, because he feared God. God built a hedge. So it's not everybody, every Christian that God has built a hedge around you unless you fear him. When you fear him, when you walk in the fear of God, God builds a hedge around you. He said, has I not built a hedge around him? Number two, has I not built a hedge around his house? May God build a hedge around your house. Your whole house, anything in your house, your family, even the cockroaches under your bed, they will all, they will all enjoy the hedge of God. I don't have time to share testimonies. God builds a hedge around you. Number three, God builds a hedge around everything that concerns you. To the east, to the west, to the north. Everything about you. 
your education, your life, your children, your loved ones, family, near and far and near, every one of them. Because you fear God, by extension, God builds a hedge around anything that concerns you and everybody within your inner circle. That is why he said, if a woman is saved and the husband is not saved, the woman should continue to pray because by that, God will protect the whole family. Even the unsaved husband is protected. So the third thing is that God builds a head around everything that concerns you, including your business, your investment, your enterprise, everything. Because you fear God. I say because you fear God. Number four, the fourth thing, the fourth breakthrough that happens when you fear God is that God begins to bless the work of your hands. <laughs> the same verse said, he said, has thou not blessed the work of his hands? I see the work of your hands getting blessed. Everything you touch will be blessed. The work of your hands will be blessed. That is why if you're a Christian, eh, if you're a Christian and you are doing work, like you are lecturing, you are doing any job, if it is possible, this is a small advice I'm giving you as a father. Get some work by yourself. Apart from the one you are doing. We are not saying stop. Even if it is Alatasamina you want to sell, or Kuli Kuli, or Dakwa, or something small, or you have some people who can do some designer dress and send to you. Every month they will send 10 pieces and you sell. Do it. Because it is the work of your hands God will bless. So if you keep working for a college, because you are in that college, the blessing will go to the college. And because your work, your hand touches, and they will not even acknowledge you. That's why when Job, uh, Jacob entered Laban's house, because God was with him, the whole of Laban's house and his business was blessed. And jo- jo- uh, Jacob said, when I came, you had a few. But as I'm leaving, look at what you have. And Laban even cheated him. And at the point, God said it's unfair. So God came and took over everything and gave to Jacob. Because it, Laban himself said, I have learned by experience that God has blessed me because of you. So wherever you are working, you will see that because of you, that work, their profit margin is going up. And because they don't believe in God, they won't even acknowledge you. They won't even add some small to you. So get something, some small side job. Instead of a side check, get a side job. Get a small side job. And when that one starts to get prosperous and blessed, you will get to a level you will stop their own and focus on your yours. Am I preaching a good message to you? Because God has promised that once you fear him, he will bless the work of your hand. Number three. Number five. Yeah, God will give increase to your substance. He increases your substance. Once you fear God, this is a breakthrough you enjoy. God increases your substance. I told you on Friday that increase is not easy to come by. You can manage, calculate, use your mind, use your ideas. This is what, this is how much I want to put down every month. It will never work. Increases of the Lord. Can you say, who increases your check? I'm so sure, you see, I can't bang in 51 pounds. 51. And now, what should a woman say, Munko Yibi, or Munko Yibi, who could hear that drop up at 33? what <laughs> trial you have tried as for increase I say it's of the Lord and thou has increased his substance he said he said and his substance is increased in the land may God cause you to increase may God cause increase in this church in your own life because you fear God may God bring increase in your life are you receiving it may God bring increase 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 plenty of it. Number three. Number six, limitless breakthrough is that when you fear God, you see robberies or robbers and thieves. Or robbery and thiefery. Robbery and thiefery attacks on you fails. When people try to rob you, they will fail. That's why, you see, when Job was on the east, he was so prosperous, rich, successful. The people tried several times to rob him, but they couldn't. Until God allowed Satan. And God said, I've taken a small out of the hedge out of him. 
Then the Bible said in the verses 15 and 17 that robbers entered and took his substance, his substance without God deciding not to take his head around you if you fear him. No robber. I prophesy over your life. No robber will thief your thing again. Neither here nor Ghana. Hey, pastor, I know somebody that is, is even a pastor, but robbers went to the house and took things. God, they took, they just took, have you not seen? They just took Job's own. He's not the first. They just took Job's own. And they took Job's own because God allowed it. So maybe God just allowed it for a testimony. Maybe there was a TV in that pastor's house that God has been telling the pastor TV we HM, you him, Pastor Nini. So that somebody will bring him a big screen TV. <laughs> Unless God allow, they can never touch anything that belongs to you. Once you fear God, I say, once you fear God, this number three. When you fear God, assassins and killers will avoid you. So there were assassins. There were people who wanted to kill Job, kill his children, kill his family, but they could not. Until the day that God said, okay, Satan, do your worst. Until God said, Satan, do your worst. No assassin. Go and read the 16 from verse 16 to 19. You will see. No assassin, but the day God said, okay, then the assassins came. They killed his, his sons and daughters. They killed some of his servants. Why? Because God said now, but as long as he feared God and the protection of God was on him, nobody could kill. I said nobody could kill. Number, number three, number eight, Abby. Eight. When you fear God, natural disaster cannot even hit you. There were natural disasters. Listen, fire, wind, they all wanted to destroy Job. And some of the fire and the wind, they are orchestrated by people. People were sending all these things against Job, but it never worked until the day God said, Satan, I've given you permission. Then the Bible said, fire came and engulfed the place. A wind from somewhere came and hit buildings, and the buildings collapsed. Once you fear God, I came to tell you, no fire, no disaster, no virus, no natural thing will hit you. Your life is insulated. Your whole being is insulated. Everything will happen. A thousand will fall by your side. Ten thousand by your right hand. But it will not come nigh thee. Only with your eyes you will see and behold the salary of the wicked. But as for you and your family, you you are insulated. You are insulated. You are covered. You are protected. You are preserved. God will deliver you. A divine escape is coming upon your life. Divine escape. Nothing could hit them. I said nothing could hit them. Why? Because they feared, the man feared God. Number nine, when you fear God, these are some of the limitless breakthroughs. When you fear God, God insulates you against sickness and ailments. <laughs> but I'm telling you, Satan had tried uh, to put sickness on Job, but it never went. That's why he went to report to God that if he can give me space. So in chapter 2, verses 3 to 5, you see that God said, now nah, I'll give you space. And the Bible says, Satan came and inflicted him with boils. Oh, this why Satan had wanted to inflict him with boils. He had wanted to inflict Job to give him krosa krosa. And to give him co uh, uh, Colonia, Colombia, something. But it could not work because Job feared God. He tried and tried. It did not work until the day God said, I'm not giving you permission. So if you fear God, then, eh, but I'm, I'm going to see my GP. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking more about sickness that I sent evil spirit human beings sit somewhere and calculate I'm not talking about your normal fever I'm talking about sickness that are coming from sources they have taken your picture to somewhere 
and you say, Monfa Pani and one ha, and one kid in him. No one, Omubungu, they would try, it will never work. When they try, it will backfire. When they try to inflict you with sickness, with disgraceful disease and painful sickness, when they try, when they try, when all your people in your village, the BBC, all those people, they go combine and activate and pour blood, it will return to them back to sender. And what I can say, my friend, you are born at Daniel. You are born in Daniel. So, what so the are about to say, because you fear God. When they try, when they call your name, thunder will strike, lightning will strike. When they mention your children, it will backfire on them. I prophesy over your life. There are benefits in fearing God. Though. So don't take the fear of God for granted. When you fear God, it's for your own good. Number 10, I close. Thank you for giving me extra few minutes. The 10th thing is that when you fear God, Satan fears you. Satan was afraid of Job. He himself said it in Job chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. He said, we have tried that, we cannot. Have you not built this? Have... You see, instead of being afraid of Satan, be afraid of God. And when you are afraid of God, Satan will be afraid of you. It's as simple as that. Those of you are afraid of witches. Fear God. When they see you, they will all be afraid of you. When you enter that village, they will all be afraid of you. When they are eating and you even put your hand in, if they put poison, the poison will multiply on them. <laughs> so be careful. All you have to do is fear God, then they will fear you. When they see you, they will be afraid. They cannot touch you. They cannot hurt you. Am I prophesying over somebody? When you fear God today, Satan and all his cohorts will be afraid of you. Witches will be afraid of you. Demons will be afraid of you. Babala will be afraid of you. Shrine will be afraid of you. Powers will be afraid of you. Every force will be afraid of you. I submit to you the fear of the Lord. For the next days and years and months of your life on earth, never walk without the fear of the Lord. Walk in the fear of the Lord. Be like Job and you will enjoy all the benefits that comes with it. I love you and I thank you for the opportunity. God bless you. Clap your hand. Give him praise. Give God praise. And in a minute, just thank the Lord for the word you have heard. Thank him. Open your mouth. Thank him. You can clap. You can thank him. We give you praise. We honor you. We bless 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 you. We thank you, Lord. Shabarabakaya. Lembro sutabrihataya. Lembro sagringa dundali bazutaya. Shebrahatato tabrikataya. And pray one simple prayer. Oh God, put the fear of the Lord in my life. Put it in my spirit. Put it in my eyes. Put it in my being. Let the fear of the Lord, oh God, run through my DNA. Let the fear of the Lord run through my blood. Let the fear of the Lord be my watchword. Let me walk in the fear of the Lord all the days of my life. Oh God, clothe me and cover me with the fear of the Lord. Oh Lord, we pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Sheba Rabbi. Pray, pray, pray. Pray for the fear of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mayaka Boruko Omaika. Thank you. Thank you. Maka Boruko. Maka Boruko. Maka In the name of Jesus. Amen.
please take your seat and let us give him mighty clap offering. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In fact, we are more than blessed. Um, Kwame, put this on CD. We will give you money so that you put this particular message on CD. 